Hi guys, welcome to Downey Live. I'm Mike and this is Dees and today we're going to give you the most in-depth and fastest tour of Stanley Park. And the best way to do that is on a tandem bike. Ready? Let's, Let's go! Welcome to Stanley Park, TripAdvisor's best park in the entire world in 2014. It's 1,001 acres, it's surrounded by Vancouver's downtown core and also the Pacific Ocean. Okay, behind us is Lost Lagoon. It got its name because it used to be an inlet. And depending what time of the day you came, at low tide, literally the lagoon would be lost. But in 1916, they built the causeway, which blocked the water in, making it a 41 acre lake. Stanley Park Seawall is great for riding, it's great for cycling, it's great for rollerblading, and even just casually walking. It follows the edge of the water and it's 8.8 .8 kilometers long. And for our American friends, that's 5.5 miles. To showcase the First Nations heritage here in Stanley Park, these totem poles behind us were carved and installed in the 1980s. This is Hallelujah Point, aptly named because the Salvation Army used to hold Sunday services here and the city of Vancouver could hear the singing of Hallelujah. Behind us is the 9 o'clock gun, originally cast in 1816 in England, brought to Vancouver in 1894. It was originally used to signal the end of the fishing period and would fire at 6 p.m. on Sunday, but now fires automatically every night at 9 p.m. to let the general public know what time it is. The 9 o'clock gun's got to be Michael and I's favorite part of Stanley Park. It's really incredible to watch, well worth coming down to see it for yourself. This is a statue of Harry Jerome. He's set six world records in seven years, including running the 100 meter dash in 10 seconds flat. He also received the Order of Canada in 1971. Also named British Columbia's Athlete of the Century. Way to go, Harry. Brockton Point Lighthouse was built in 1890. And the lighthouse keeper was busy. He had to run the fog bell, keep the lanterns lit, hoist the signals up the storm warning mast, and fire the nine o'clock gun. It was decommissioned in 2005. But it still looks good. Behind us in the water is a statue often mistakenly known as the mermaid, when in fact, it's a girl in a wetsuit. It was given as a gift to the Vancouver Parks Board by sculptor Elek Imedi. And it represents Vancouver's dependence on the sea. Behind us is the figurehead of the SS Empress of Japan. Which was a commerce ship which carried commerce between North America and the Orient for 31 years in the early 1900s. Nailed it. Behind us is Lumberman's Arch, which was made for the arrival of the Duke and Duchess of Connaught in Vancouver. And they built a much larger structure which actually went over Pender Street at Hamilton in downtown Vancouver. It was made in 1912, but was then moved to this location in 1919. Now in 1947, due to natural deterioration, it was actually taken down to be replaced by this arch you see in 1952. The reason it was built was to showcase the importance of the lumber industry here in British Columbia. This is the Lionsgate Bridge, otherwise known as the First Narrows Bridge. It was built in 1938. Some may not know this, also a National Historic Site of Canada. Originally, when the architect wanted to have it built, he couldn't afford the land on the north side to be able to construct the bridge, but he was able to convince the Guinness family, yes from the beer, to invest in that land, hence why in West Vancouver, a large section of it is called the British Properties. Behind us is Loden's Lookout, originally built as a signal station to guide ships through the first Narrows Bridge. But today it stands as Prospect Point, a great viewpoint for tourists to come look at the Lionsgate Bridge. Behind us is Stanley Park's Hollow Tree, a natural monument that stands to recognize the original forest of giant trees. It's approximately a thousand years old and has a circumference at the base of almost 50 feet. And it may be Stanley Park's oldest tree. It's a western red cedar and it's iconic for having your photo taken in your car backed into the stump. Now of course you can't do that anymore, but you can still get a great shot. Stanley Park has over 27 kilometers of natural trails hidden throughout all of the park. Now this is a real hidden gem in Stanley Park. As you come off the Siwash Trail here behind us, we are now standing on a First World War artillery battery. They also had spotlights here in the Second World War. Behind us is the iconic Siwash Rock. Contained within Stanley Park is a rowing club, horse-drawn carriage tours, the Royal Vancouver Yacht Club, a naval base on Dead Man's Island, a cricket pitch, a rugby pitch, a water park, a beach, a second beach, an 18-hole pitch and putt course, a tennis club, a lawn bowling club, a beautiful rose garden, an outdoor miniature train, and even an outdoor concert space. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a like down below. And if you wanna be a part of future videos with me, don't forget to subscribe by clicking on my face over there, which is now over top of Tisa's, and you can watch the next video here. I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. See ya.